Hello, Alex Cole, on this fine August 25th. How are you, my friend? Fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. How's life in England? It's actually sunny, surprisingly, and it was sunny in Wales, too, and Paris. Amazing oh weather. Fantastic. Uh, I can tell you that it was hot in New York City. Lower Manhattan is uh, in the throngs of late August steamroller uh, kind of environment. Not a great yeah. time to be wearing a suit and tie, but... Uh, no. That's what dry cleaners are for. We'll get all that cleaned up. <laughs> yeah. In terms of things heating up, let's uh, let's turn our eye to the markets, Alex. Let's look at the cross asset heat map using go to go trend colors to tell us what's leading and what's lagging. Yep. So we've got the asset class map on here with the uh, S and P in the top panel, Treasury bond prices in the second panel, commodity index in the third, and then the dollar, of course, at the bottom. And you can see that. Equities are still in a go trend, albeit weakening this week. Treasury bond prices rolled over and they're painting strong no-go bars. Um, interestingly, commodities have found some strength uh, again, and the dollar continues to surprise everybody for another week. Absolutely. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, interest rates that sell off in bonds and what that looks like on the uh, on the TNX. But uh, first, let's tune into the S&P 500. Let's look at the price action of the US dominant uh, equity index real quick. And we'll see uh, how that's looking from a trend perspective and, and take a look at this week's price action. What are you seeing on the yeah. chart here, Alex? Well, we're seeing a little bit of fluctuation around that horizontal level that sort of we've seen a lot of buying and selling in the past six months, a lot of support and then resistance. <clears throat> and what we were looking at this week was uh, the oscillator finding or testing, I should say, testing the zero from above. Um, it's actually broken into negative territory, but holding it about negative one. So we're going to be really curious to see if that can get back to and above zero um, if the go trend is to hold. But you can see how we kind of broke above that level. We've come back below it and we're trying to rally again today. So uh, very interesting at the moment on the S&P. Absolutely. And so this is that daily basis. What if we uh, turned our eye to a weekly chart of the S&P uh, just to see what's happening on a longer term perspective? Yeah. So the weekly chart, you can see sort of where that resistance and support horizontal line comes from all the way back here. We were finding support, 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 and then a clustering here, still support. And then when we broke through that level, it then started to serve as resistance, which is where we are now, I suppose. But on the weekly longer term time frame, we can see a break into positive territory on the oscillator. So um, we're sort of in that crossing over sort of inflection point of whether which one's going to lead the other? Will the long-term chart turn bullish or, or is the daily going to uh, roll back over into no-go to line up with what we're seeing on the weekly? Absolutely. So our longer time frame, we're still in a no-go trend. Uh, what would you need to see on the daily chart to, uh, to give you more confidence in our recent counter trend rally to see that uh, really take hold and perhaps even see a, a, a catch up on the weekly back into a go trend. Yeah, I mean, I think that the daily chart needs to make new highs, right? We need to see this come back above support, uh, and then we need to see a new high. If we can see a new high above these levels from earlier this month, then we're going to uh, we're going to be able to say that the go trend is still in place. Remember that the most simple form of identifying a trend is just looking for higher highs and higher lows in terms of an uptrend. So we've got that, and if this holds here as a low, then we could see this as a lower as a higher low, I'm sorry, and then if we can get back above this level and make a new high, that would be really, really encouraging. If we can make a new high on the daily, we may well see uh, the weekly continue to move higher and eventually change back to go bars. Absolutely. I know in this uh, Monday morning's uh, research note that went out, uh, we also looked at uh, a four hour, uh, certainly for uh, for the chart of Apple. But let's just take a look at that intraday basis for the S&P 500 as well, just to see what uh, what what we're seeing in uh, in today's trading. Yeah. So if you drop this down to a four hour chart, it's uh, a little bit faster moving than the daily. And you can see that we corrected a little bit heavier. We actually painted an amber go fish bar, but we re-entered a go trend here as the oscillators turned back up. And you can see quite clearly that the oscillator on the four hour time frame broke below zero and is now below it. So we'll we'll need that to get back to zero. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll need this go trend here to continue on the four hour chart. Yeah, talking with some traders in, in New York City this week, uh, a lot of commentary about the volume aspect mm -hmm. uh, that was that was coming into play for, for down days. 
Um, so just e explain to us real quickly with the Gonna Go Oscillator in the lower panel, uh, what does it mean when we're changing from green to dark blue? Yeah, so that's an important point that we make, need to make sure we, we mention each week is that the volume is included in the oscillator. And when the volume is heavier than its average, its recent average, then it turns dark blue. So you can see a little bit of extra trading here as we move lower in price. We see the volume coming in as it turns dark blue there, but has as lightened off a little bit in the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. So for all of our uh, viewers, you know, we, we want to use the Gonogo chart to manage trade risk uh, using these indicators, uh, whether at the index level or an individual security uh, is, is really a, a composite view on all of the technical indicators that are so tried and true and, and back tested and objective. Uh, but we also want to look at some of the intermarket factors that are affecting equities. Uh, so let's turn our eye to the TNX. Um, and when we're talking about treasury yields and we're seeing some of the the headwinds for this recent rally in the S&P 500, uh, obviously interest rates are one of them. Um, and we've seen uh, we've, we've seen the bond prices selling off and rising interest rates uh, back up above 3.1% uh, this week. So for, yes, yeah, let's take a look at that on the daily basis and uh, and just see what, uh, what we can identify in terms of trends for uh, long-term U.S. Treasuries. Yeah, so we had this circled um, uh, when the note went out on Monday because we were looking at this change in trend happening, these transitionary bars, uh, the amber go fish bars. Remember, we talk about go bars, no go bars, and then go fish bars, meaning that there's a time of uncertainty. We're not sure if it's a go or a no go. Not enough of the criteria behind the go no go trend are being met in a bullish or a bearish uh, conditions to, to paint one of those two trends. So we see amber go fish bars. And this is what we were looking at here. Uh, we were wondering if this was going to be transitionary or whether we were going to go back to the no-go. And you can see that the oscillator led us to this sort of change of trend by breaking above zero uh, several several days ago. And you can see how that's actually been followed with go bars now coming in on the daily chart for TNX. Absolutely. And if we switch this over to a weekly view, just for a little longer term perspective, uh, obviously, we, we, we take a look at the quarterly chart every now and again, and, and we can see that very long term downtrend starting from uh, 1981, um, kind of the bull market in bonds that's been uh, a secular trade for over 40 years. And we saw that uh, mean reversion back above uh, yeah. that, that long term trend line. And here we're seeing a little bit, little bit more consolidation um, and, and some sideways tra trading ranges. Uh, but here, that last bar being this week's trading uh, for Treasury mm -hmm. rates seems to be back in a strong go trend. Yeah, and back at zero on the oscillator as well. So the, the weekly chart shows the rising rate environment that we saw all year. And, and we can see after a bit of a correction, a bit of a correction uh, sort of signaled by the counter trend correction arrow here. We can see how that's turned and resumed the strong go bars as the oscillators quickly got back to zero. So longer term chart looks like a go trend. So interesting to see the daily following suit as well. Absolutely. All right, let's turn our eye to the US dollar, one of the other major macro forces affecting uh, equities, anti-correlated to the trends in stocks. Uh, we see the strength in the US dollar uh, really causing some, some trouble. Uh, we, we saw big sell-offs last week and it uh, looks like we are. Uh, back in that upward trend. Talk to us about what you're seeing on the chart here, Alex. Well, just over overarching go conditions um, that we saw that longer correction that was actually uh, was enough to paint a couple of no go and an amber go fish bar mm -hmm. uh, when the oscillator had tipped us off by going below zero on heavy volume. But now oscillator back above zero, bursting through the zero line, go trend coming back with a go tri trend continuation green circle here and, and actually now we're up here trying to set new highs so incredibly the dollar continues to run absolutely and if we if we look at this on a little longer term basis as well uh just to see you know how far we have come uh you know record uh lifetime uh, uh highs here uh for many of us who uh, haven't been in the market forever um that's a that's a pretty robust go trend yeah. Certainly is. And this is what we look for. You know, every time when there's a trend in place, remember, we we can use the oscillator and the zero line as an objective level of support or resistance. So when in a go trend, when the oscillator holds as su at support and the zero, and we see the oscillator rally back into positive territory. Those give us low risk 
trend continuation situations that we pull out with these green circles because it's telling us that the momentum is back in the direction of the trend, which of course is a go trend. So you can see all the way through this, these go trend continuation icons that are really sort of uh, highlighting these buy the dip moments. And we've got another one of those now on the weekly chart. Absolutely. So even if you are not a currency trader, the, the lessons here for trend following investors is that when we find durable trends, we want to be patient enough to stick with them. And beyond just staying with them through the through the bulk of the move, we also want to be able to uh, pyramid into our positions, scale up our sizing as uh, as the trend continues to play out. So those green circles, those trend continuation icons are that that viable dip opportunity where you see the evidence of momentum coming back in the direction of the trend. Obviously, using multiple time frames uh, is uh, quite an advantage as well. Well, Alex, on the asset class map, we also saw commodities coming back into a go trend. Uh, why don't we pull up a chart of USO uh, just to take a look at what's happening in the oil space? Um, talking with some traders uh, uh, this week, uh, commenting on how Germany is uh, pre-purchased over 85% of the natural gas that they're going to need. They're going to be ready for this winter. Obviously, those uh, those markets, uh, not gas and, and oil, uh, have been extremely volatile, particularly since Russia invaded the Ukraine, and we've had some disruptions in the supply chain. Um, but talk to us about what you're seeing in the chart of oil. So this is the longer term chart. Let's start with the weekly here, and we can always go down to the daily. But this is uh, a weekly chart of U.S. oil, and you can see what a trend this has been. Um, obviously, these last few months, we've seen a cooling off and a correction in commodity prices. But Overall, we are in a long term go trend. And again, you can see that concept of the zero line offering us low risk opportunities to participate every time it holds as support for the oscillator. Now, what we were talking about earlier this week in our note flight path that went out on Monday was, will we continue to see that or have we now flipped and are we seeing resistance at the zero line? We've seen this a couple of times and now we're right back at zero this week. So this will be very, very important uh, whether or not there's enough uh, strength in price to get the oscillator back above zero and into this environment where we've got a go trend and positive momentum, or will we see this get turned away from the zero line and we'll start to see this as resistance, which would be a real worry then for the long-term trend in oil. If we dip this down to a daily chart, you can see that we are at that inflection point. And on the daily, we have started to paint amber go fish bars. This mm -hmm. is where we were at the beginning of the week. We were wondering, would the zero line hold again on the daily as resistance, of course, this time, because we are in a no-go trend. But what have we seen? We've seen actually the oscillator break through the zero line on heavy volume. You see how it's dark blue here. And then we're actually now seeing amber bars being painted by go no go trend. So if this continues, and the daily can resume a go trend, then that will uh, sort of hint to us that the weekly trend may well remain in place. Absolutely. And that's that's what we talk about in terms of multiple time frame approach. Uh, when we see that longer term, the, the underlying bias uh, for this trade is to the upside, uh, taking entries on a fresh go in the uh, daily time frame yeah. makes a lot of sense because you have the confirmation of the uh, longer term time frame. And that, that goes back to Charles Dow 130 years ago and lessons learned that, uh, that are still relevant today. Well, Alex, uh, those are our three major macro forces, uh, the interest rates, the US dollar and, uh, and oil. Why don't we take a look at the S&P 500 sector rel map uh, just to see what's happening in the nature of the S&P 500 trend on a sector basis relative to the benchmark. So again, we're taking a look at the ratio of each sector against the S&P 500. So we know that, uh, that we're, we're holding that, uh, that go trend condition. And we want to see what's, uh, what's leading and lagging from a sector perspective to get us a better understanding of the nature of the market underneath the hood. Absolutely. And hopefully my ninja skills were on display there as I think I got kicked out. I had to log back in, but uh, <laughs> you did hopefully, great. You see the, uh, hopefully you can see the sector realm at now. Absolutely. Um, and what we're seeing is actually a lot more go colors coming into the sectors. So uh, the bulls should be pretty, uh, pretty pleased with what's happening on a sector level. We've been talking for a while now about how the strength has been in these growth sectors, technology and discretionary. But, you know, if you look now, we're seeing strength also in energy again. 
relative to the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that strength that we saw last week continue in industrials. And we're even seeing materials coming in now uh, for a week go trend joining utilities. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six sectors now in relative go trends to the S&P 500. Absolutely. And that, you know, when we talk about tactical asset allocation, holding winners, um, we, we compare portfolio management with a lot of our clients to uh, to gardening. Right. It's weeding and watering. It's making sure that uh, the things that are working are getting extra uh, extra allocation and the things that are not uh, are, are trimmed down or out of our portfolios. Uh, I can't help but stare at that uh, dark purple bar for uh, for the communication sector and think about all of those streaming services that added advertisements back in. You know, it seems like the audience uh, is not finding that a very popular move. Yeah. Alex, let's let's pull up a chart of the XLE, the energy sector. Uh, let's look at it first on an absolute basis. So just the just the price action of the XLE, and then we'll uh, we'll pull up a ratio chart of the XLE to the SPY. Yeah. So on an absolute basis, this is what we're seeing from a trend perspective in energy. Obviously, the the leading indicator of uh, the gonna go oscillator, that momentum break out of a go no go squeeze. So we saw compressed volatility both in the price range uh, as it uh, as it made that uh, short term bottom and struck a fresh go trend as uh, um, as that momentum broke to the upside. Um, do you see any worries right here on uh, on today's bar in terms of that counter trend correction arrow? Well, yeah, of course, a counter trend correction arrow can um, indicate that in the short term, we may struggle to go higher. But also remember, in strong trends, we can blow right past those. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a very nice chart because uh, as trend followers, we know that we can't catch the very low um, of a trend and we're not trying to we're trying to make our money on the meat of the move right mm -hmm. so you know for example here we're noticing this bottom in in the no-go trend and when we see the oscillator break above zero that's a really positive sign when it rides the zero line again and then breaks out of the squeeze that you mentioned we see that happening on a go trend with a go trend continuation icon happening on the same bar so that's mm -hmm. that's a really sort of a nice trend following setup where you've got a rally in price, you've got a retest, and then you've got an indication, you've got a, a sort of a, a, a message to, uh, to believe in the fact that yes, we've retested and now we might go again. And then you see this really string of uninterrupted strong blue bars running up to a new high, a new intermediate high. Uh, and yes, we have this counter trend correction arrow. So perhaps we may go sideways, we may consolidate against the trend for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but a uh, very healthy picture for the XLE. Absolutely. So let's let's turn that over to a ratio chart, XLE over the SPY, and we'll start to see where the outperformance uh, began in relationship to this recent go trend. Uh, that way, that way, as we're uh, talking about relative strength, and we want to be owning the things that are beating the benchmark as as portfolio managers, uh, our relative performance is key and. You can't outperform your benchmark without owning the things that are outperforming the benchmark. So uh, on a relative basis, Alex, talk to us about uh, what you're seeing on this chart. Yeah. And what we love about technicals is, is just that you're looking at the chart and the chart can be read the same way, whether you're looking at an equity, whether you're looking at a commodity or whether you're looking at a ratio. Right. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we're looking at the relative strength ratio of energy to the S&P. But you can quite quickly see how we broke above. Uh, level of resistance here, right? And we sort of broke higher on a go bar that when we see that uh, confluence of events where we see trend color change happening at significant levels, that's always a good sign. And we've also seen how the oscillator gave us a warning and tipped us off that it was uh, going to give the no go some trouble as it broke into positive territory and then started to ride the zero line, building this max go no go squeeze. When it breaks out, it breaks out on a color change on an amber bar and then we see that follow through with the go bar breaking above resistance and then you can see how that dynamic has switched between the energy sector and, and the S&P 500. Of course we've been talking about energy outperformance for so long it really then struggled and was underperforming for the last couple of months but perhaps now that outperformance is back. Absolutely oh, that's a great summary Alex. Let's turn our eye to the XLK uh, totally different structurally, a uh, much larger uh, constituent of the S&P 500 on a cap weighted index. Uh, energy is less than 4% of the, of the U.S. equity market. 
Uh, but if we take a look at the technology sector, uh, we're going to see a uh, much tighter correlation to the S&P 500. But first, on an absolute basis, uh, looking at that breakout in, tech, in the information technology sector, um, what are you seeing from a trend perspective right now? Yeah, right now we're seeing a little bit of a, a weakness in the XLK. We're seeing these paler aqua bars. We're seeing the oscillator failing to find support at zero. So um, a little bit of weakness in the go trend on XLK. Um, and you can see that real strong run that was that was signaling the outperformance that we've been talking about. Uh, but now we are seeing a little bit of weakness here. We're seeing the oscillator break below zero. But like you said, uh, much more like the S&P chart just because of the makeup of the S&P being so dominated now by the technology companies. And if we look at this on a relative basis to the S&P 500, uh, to see the uh, see the trend take shape on a relative basis to the index. Yeah, um, we're still seeing our performance. And as you can see here, much tighter uh, much tighter sort of uh, situation with the, with the larger ratio bars. But you can see that we are still seeing our performance here. But... Mm -hmm a break below zero on the oscillator again in terms of that ratio between technology and the S&P. Absolutely. Let's turn our eye to uh, a couple of single securities. First, let's let's pull up the chart of Apple. Uh, why don't we start on the weekly basis and then we'll work our way down. Uh, we've, we've talked about this uh, in, in several of the recent shows over the last month, um, just as Apple has had uh, you know tremendous runs since the COVID collapse, uh, but really struggled here in 2022 uh, with the, with the sell-off in equities generally. Uh, yeah. So from a very long perspective, what are you seeing right now, Alex? Yeah, I mean, as you said, what a run it has been for some of these big tech companies and Apple uh, certainly um, benefiting from that real run through 2020 and even into 2021. Apple Apple has performed better than most, in fact. And you can see that the, the no-go didn't last that long. We saw the oscillator below zero for a few months and then getting back above zero. Now, when we sent this no doubt flight path at the beginning of the week, uh, we, we noted that we've had these consecutive Ambergo fish bars, and we were wondering what uh, what would that mean and what would happen next, especially as we're coming up against some prior levels of resistance. Well, with the oscillator well into positive territory, this week's bar is painting the first of the go colors. So on a weekly chart, we seem to be back into a go, even a week one at the moment. And if we switch that to the daily, uh, we'll see the go trend uh, appearing during that uh, that rally on the weekly chart that we saw on the right hand side of the chart. Um, yeah. And the last few days, some weakness in the markets. Yeah. Uh, how, how what would you look for as uh, as your next confirming sign uh, that this trend still has health? Well, what, what's interesting is this was an incredibly steep and and tight uh, upward trend line, and this is where we were on Monday. We were right back at the trend line. We were falling towards zero. And we had this counter trend correction arrow telling us we might struggle in the short term to go higher. But um, this is certainly looking like a higher low. And we were talking about how we should watch the oscillator now to see what happens if we do test it from above. And we certainly are. We've spent a couple of bars at the zero line. Mm -hmm. We'll be watching what happens here. Given that the weekly is entering a go trend, uh, we'll be very um, interested to see if this can rally off the zero line and give us an entry point on the daily, given that the weekly has now actually become a uh, go. Should it should obviously should the week finish uh, at least as high as we are now. Absolutely. And on an inter intraday basis, if we take a look at a four hour chart, uh, just to get a little more granular on the uh, on the price action, the trading right right now. Uh, yeah. What is this chart telling you, Alex? Yeah, well, very similar to the daily. We've just stepped down, a, you know, one time frame, mm -hmm. but it allows us to get a sort of a, a sensible entry point. Like if we're lining these time frames up and saying, OK, the weekly is turning to a go, the daily uh, is in a go and finding support at zero. If I'm going to go down in time frame and look for some sensible entry point, perhaps I'm going to wait for the four hour for the oscillator to get back above zero while in this go trend. You can see that the four hour has gone back to a strong go already um, after having a, its period of weakness. Mm -hmm. So on the four hour, we're maybe moving a little faster. We might get that entry on the four hour a little quicker than we would on the daily. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Alex, for all of that. And for all of you who are tuning in each week to the Go No Go show here on Stock Charts TV, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe to uh, the Stock Charts channel. You can also check out the Go No Go Charts channel on YouTube. 
but I want to encourage all of you to download StockChartsTV.com, the on-demand app, so you can carry this show and many other exceptional analysts with you wherever uh, wherever you go. Alex, as always, it's a pleasure. I hope uh, I hope your travels are safe and enjoyable, and uh, we'll see you back here again next week. Thank you. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.